Now, County Waterford here is particularly well off in terms of uh, thatched houses and cottages. And recently, the County Council carried out a survey to discover precisely how many thatched buildings they've got and what sort of state of repair they're in. Well, happily, the news was very positive uh, indeed. It showed a tradition and a craft alive and well. Thatched house is a beautiful traditional house that looks as if it grew there and usually the setting it's in it keeps the character of the area. When I look at a thatched house I see a continuation of a historic tradition. It's got a lot of um, positive things going for it in terms of its aesthetics and um, I think it has a place in this environment because it's part of our history. Waterford County Council carried out a survey of all the thatched buildings in 2006. It was to find out how many historic thatched houses still survived in the county, the condition that they were in, and to keep a record of what was there and to help in the conservation of these buildings. We found that there was 201 in the county and we found another four since and there's probably one or two more in more isolated areas. We found the main distribution was along the Blackwater River, or the Bride, along the coast from Ardmore, Dungarvan, Annstown, Dunmore East, Tremor. Well, we found that up to 78% of all houses were in good to excellent condition, so that was very heartening. We also found that there have been several, everybody has their own individual touch with each of the buildings, and that's fine too. Uh, we found that the roofs in most cases are kept in good condition, and people are keeping these roofs going the whole time. Uh, before there was a tradition, maybe the farm or the local, in somebody in the local area would do the thatch roof, whereas now people have to employ a thatcher. We found that the houses, uh, people are very proud of their houses and they're very proud to show us around. Uh, my parents moved here in the 60s and I suppose they were looking for something traditional that was, uh, would keep the character of the village and they made a big effort at the time to keep the thatched roof and um, basically the house was derelict and we removed the walls and propped up the thatched roof and rebuilt the house completely underneath and that's the way the house is today. Uh, one of the main advantages I think is it's much easier to heat and it's very beautiful to look at and we have people stopping here all summer on nice days taking photographs and so on, asking about the thatch. The main materials of the thatched houses in County Waterford were materials which were close at hand. In County Waterford the roofs are of reed. Uh, we have found in some cases that wheat and straw, straw and moss were used. Um, the walls were constructed of clay or else stone and then they were rendered with a lime mortar. Well, this, uh, this um, material that's used on the roof is water reed, and water reed has been used in Ireland, but not on the same level as, as um, straw had been in the past. All the houses in, the, in this village were originally attached with straw, and now they've been converted to reed because straw wasn't available for thatch. And um, it's a very durable material, possibly lasting somewhere up from 25 to 30 years old. It, it is expensive, but it's so weighed too by the uh, values that, that can be retrieved back from the heat insulation. Um, the aesthetic value is always pleasant in, in itself. And I think really when you spread it out over the amount of years that you get out of it, I think it's probably still good value as a roof. And it's a hand, it's a very personal roof. It's specifically done for that person and there's a lot goes into it. So I, I think it is, yeah, it's good value. Since my mother and father bought the house, it has been uh, attached three times since the 60s. And we were able to get two grants, which covered about two thirds of the cost of the thatching, which is a great help. There is grant aid available for upkeep of thatch. There's County Council Conservation Grant Scheme. There's money from the Department of Environment and also the Heritage Council provide funding. It isn't just old buildings that have been thatched in County Waterford. There's a lot of new houses being thatched also. There's probably 25 to 30 new thatch in the county, including a hotel. The tradition of thatching in this area has been increasing over the last number of years, particularly with the new, there's a number of new houses that have been built here in the village. And the 
County Council have given planning permission for those new houses to go ahead. So it's a positive sign and added to the number of existing thatches that are in the village, which is quite significant. I think it's probably in the region of about 25 somewhere. Well, I think that thatched, thatched houses uh, imbue character to a village or to a town. We've quite a lot of urban thatch in County Waterford, in Ardmore, Lismore, here in Dunmore East. And um, they definitely add a certain character because uh, they're, they're quickly disappearing all around the country. And it's great to see them here in large numbers. And in a village like Dunmore East here, with so much thatch, well, there's thatching going on all the time. And as we came up the main street here, we bumped into Thatcher Hugh O'Neill, who you have seen in our uh, story just a short while ago, and we decided we'd have an extra natter with him. Hugh, what's the state of health of uh, thatching now? Is it very difficult to find a thatcher? No, there's actually quite a few thatchers in the country, actually more than when I started back in 79. Um, through a government... Um, um, courses that have been run over the last number of years there's actually last year I think they actually trained 12 people and um, there's been quite a few touchers come in from England as well who have been working here over the last 10 or 15 years. But I, I guess uh, a couple of decades ago the craft was practically dying out was it? Yeah when I started actually there was um, there was three elderly men back in in 79 when I started and they were professional touchers and then it kind of more or less finished with them and then there was a new generation came in after that then. And, and I, can, I can see that with an existing thatch, there'd be ongoing maintenance to be done, a bit of thatching every now and then. But who are the people who are putting thatch on new houses? They tend to be um, wealthy people who have um, the idea that thatch would be actually uh, quite nice to have on the roof because it looks, it fits into the environment. Um, they tend to be more interested in, in the craft because it's, it's, it's a handmade product and they're, they're the ones who actually support it in some ways. And presumably ecologically friendly. So. Absolutely. There, there's, um, because of the, the fact that it's a replenishable material as well, it has a, it has a lot of interest today. Of course, a time was when a thatch was associated with uh, poverty, because yeah. the, the rich people had the slaves. But have we gone full circle then? That, uh, well, we're it's the rich people yeah, of the thatch well, Certainly, now. it appears like that. Yeah, we're, we're after um, turning a corner, I think. <laughs> And we're enjoying something of a renaissance now, in a way. I would say that it's certainly, um, it has been on the increase. And I've seen in the last 10 years in particular, I think a lot of new houses that are going into sensitive areas, they will consider thatch as a, as a, as a roofing material. And the loss of thatch then has been stemmed. We're, we're safe for the future. I think actually it's looking healthier now than it ever has looked. And, and I think it's also too because of our prosperity as well in this country. I think we've actually, we don't rule it out. And this charming uh, thatch cottage here in the middle of uh, Dunmore East with its traditional half door and so on is one of the lovely buildings which is maintained uh, by Hugh every year and it's home to Don Palmer and his wife Heather. Don, what's it like to live under the thatch? It's, it's actually very, very, very nice. The, uh, the houses are um, very cool in the summer and nice and warm in the winter. It's, it's like having a, a duvet at night. But, but the convenience of living here, it's, it's very difficult to get a house in the middle of the village. And we were fortunate enough to come across this cottage and it's within walking distance of the shops. And You've sort of struck a balance between the traditional exterior and a very modern and comfortable interior. We have, yes, yes, we have. We, 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 the, uh, it's, it's, it, in, in my view, it's much nicer to be living in an old house that's modernised rather than an old house that's old. I think it's, it's very important to have, have a house com comfortable in, inside. And Don, in your professional life, of course, you're uh, an, an estate agent. Do you find people are building modern thatched houses increasingly? I do, yes. We, we, we sell a number of sites around the village. And there, two or three years ago, we sold the site. And uh, uh, he, he was having planning problems. And we suggested putting a thatched roof on the house. And uh, he decided to do that. And, and Hugh thatched the house for him. And I must say, the house looks absolutely amazing. And it's, it's, a, no, it's a modern house with a thatched roof, but it looks, it looks as, as if the house was there for years. So you can have the traditional appearance, but the modern comfort Exactly, inside. yes, exactly, exactly. Life under the thatch.